Hello, welcome to Eating and Training Smart. My name is Paul, Paul DeAngelis, and I'm your host. Today we're gonna to talk about a multitude of things, but we're first gonna start with, what's the premise for what we're doing here today? We're trying to introduce a lifestyle. Lifestyle is a very, very large term, has a multitude of meanings. For us, lifestyle is gonna be behaviors, attitudes, certain things you do and don't do, certain things you want, can't have, certain things you need. Everything that we're gonna talk about is gonna be related to the lifestyle that you wanna lead. Most people, when they say, well, what is a lifestyle? Oh, it's the clothes I wear. It's how I look, it's how I feel. It's gonna be all of that. What we're gonna to try to introduce here is you and gaining, acquiring a healthy lifestyle. So let's start. Well, we first need to talk about, well, where do you, where do you fit in? Are you a baby boomer, such as myself? Are you a Gen X? Are you a millennial? Are you an ultra or a silent? There's a lot of different names. They, those terms basically put you into a certain age group. We're not gonna center in on just what age you are. We're gonna center in on where you're at, at that age. So today, we're gonna to talk about a bunch of different things to help you acquire that healthy lifestyle wherever you're at. One of the things that is very, very, very important in life is to be happy and healthy. EAT, and EAT stands for eating and training smart, is gonna to try to introduce you to a multitude of ways to make that happen, to make you a happy and a healthy person. So let's begin. We're gonna to start today by doing a couple juices, extracting certain nutrients from products that are gonna give you some power, some calm, add a little calm to your life, possibly help you with some problems that you may have. But what they're going to do, and the most important thing is, they're gonna make you feel good. So we're gonna do two juices today, and we're gonna extract using an extractor, and these ingredients that you see here on the table. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna be a carrot, celery, apple, ginger. Let's take a minute and talk about ginger. This is a superfood. Well, what's a superfood? Um, doesn't have a little cape and flies around the room, but it should. Two things that you really need to know about is ginger and another thing called turmeric. What you probably see in these spice containers at most of your supermarkets or your stores. Turmeric and ginger, we call them TAG, T-A-G, turmeric and ginger, are just some, two of the best spices that you could add to things like juices and foods. They, they help in so many different ways. Anxiety, uh, and they're anti-inflammatory. They help with some people with stomach disorders. They help with their high antioxidant. So the one thing we're gonna to do today is we're gonna add a little bit of ginger to our first juice. So let's begin. On this side, I have, well, it looks like a lot of hardware, and it is. Let me give you a little background. I was a culinary and um, educator, restaurant management instructor for many years. I taught students culinary arts, how to manage restaurants. One of the most important things they had to learn was knife skills. So throughout the course of today and hopefully in the future, we're gonna discuss all different types of tools that make this job easier from here. So let's pick up two things. We're gonna start with a basic utility knife. These come in all different sizes and what you can see, it's the granddaddy and there's the middle. So there's three different blades. All the blades, the most important thing to know about knives and knife skills is, the only thing more dangerous than a sharp knife is a dull knife. Because if, you're gonna, if you get cut accidentally, 
a sharp knife will cut, it's a repair. If it's dull, it'll tear and rip and cause more damage. So today we're gonna use the utility knife. Now all of these vegetables and fruits were washed. Let's talk about that just for a second. Fruits and vegetables are great. Everybody, oh, eat fruits and vegetables, the most healthy thing. The problem is if they're not cleaned properly, they can contain some contaminants. Um, one other thing I want to talk about briefly, supermarkets and where to source food. Food sourcing is one of the most complicated issues for people today. So most people go, well, I just go to the supermarket. Okay, but when they go to the supermarket, they don't realize, and I call them the traps that occur in a supermarket. Most people don't know you should shop the outside of the supermarket. Try to stay away from the inside because what's always on the inside of the supermarket? The cans, the bottles, the processed. The outside, your produce, your meat, your fish, and sometimes your dairy. So I always recommend to my clients, shop the outside. Besides being a culinary educator or an educator in restaurant management, I also happen to be a certified personal trainer. I'm with a group called ACE, ACE. It stands for the American Council on Exercise. And I learned a tremendous amount by studying and being a personal trainer for the last uh, 20 something years. When you go to a supermarket or to a market, because now we can't just say supermarkets, there are food markets. You really need to be aware of what you're buying. It's, it goes way beyond just reading labels and knowing what you're reading, or most people say, I don't even understand what that word is. That word does not make sense to me. So we're gonna look at things beyond just sugar and salt and fat, which a lot of people think is, is always a negative, but it's not. Fat can be a good thing also. Let's get back to the juice. So, knife skills. The first thing you wanna realize with knife skills is we never do this. If your hand is like that, pretty soon they're gonna be calling you four finger, three finger, two finger, because you're gonna, you're gonna have an accident. We always crop and then we cut. I don't even have to look, I'm not gonna hit it. The reason being, if my hands are cropped, my fingers are tilted, the knife has a place to go. So, for this, we're gonna do a rough cut. We don't need to do a finite cut. In the culinary world, there are a lot of different types of cuts, especially if you're gonna do fine uh, dining and cooking. We're just gonna add our product, celery first, and the recipe for most of these juices is about, it's gonna be almost 50% of either the fruit and or the vegetable or both, and then another 50% depending on what you wanna add, and then we're gonna add water. Okay, again, the superfood. We're gonna add a very small amount. Ginger and the turmeric that we talked about, super, super potent. So we don't need a lot. And then we're gonna add just a little sweetness. Now, you'll notice on the apple, the carrot, I didn't take the skin off. Another debate, do you leave the skin on, do you take the skin off? I wash everything, I like to leave the skins on. This is gonna be an extraction process. What that means is we're gonna extract all the nutrients from this product. Some people prefer to use juicers. And what a juicer will do, it'll extract the juice and drop the pulp. I did juicing for many, many, many years. I prefer now this for two reasons. Number one, I like the flavor profile better and I like to get the fiber content. Okay. Now, sometimes the products that you add to the extractor, they get a little stuck. So this company recommends a little shake or a little drop. Now, because we did this with carrots and celery, which are high water content, and apple, that's not gonna happen. So our first juice, we're gonna take a look at that right there. Wow, that's good, okay. I like to have one of these 
once a day. Again, the properties of the juice are what's most important. There is a multitude of things that you can extract. Um, I don't recommend, and it's mainly fruits and vegetables, and sometimes seeds. You can use chia seeds, flax, other different grains too. Today we'd stay basic and simple with just these products. And now we're gonna move on to our second juice. Second juice, we're gonna add kale, carrot, apple, and garlic, which is hiding out in the refrigerator. Another superfood. I love garlic. Most people don't like me because I love garlic and it comes out, but I love to roast it and just eat it like pieces of candy. It's phenomenal. But again, highly potent, highly potent. And I remember back in the day when garlic became just the food, the super food, everybody was taking what they called elephant garlic, shaving off the top, drizzling a little olive oil, and we would bake it in the oven, and it would come out like a paste and just put it on your bread before your meal, or mix it into your, your dinner, or, or, or whatever you were cooking for the day. So the second thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add our kale. Now this was a pre-washed, pre-chopped kale that I bought, and you can buy it in the supermarket or any market. The good thing about this is it's ready to go. It saves you some time. One of the things we need to talk about also is time. Everybody has time constraints. I do, you do, we all do. So what's the key? Well, time management. To do everything you need to do in a day, in one day, sometimes very difficult. Now, the key to this is that some of these products can be bought prepared. They're not processed, they're prepared for you. So the kale was ready to go. You can buy carrot and celery sticks. I happen to not buy it for this particular instance, but for um, time saving, you can easily buy it and add it to the same recipe. Okay. One clove. You add more than one clove and you're gonna notice it. Um, it's very potent. I like to put another piece of kale on the top. Again, water, and let's talk about water. The, the myth with water, the most soluble liquid on the planet. And what happens? Well, all we hear about today is the water is contaminated. The water is no good. I have to buy water. It's bottled water, canned water, box water. Big debate. This is a filtered water source, triple filtered. We filter it through here and then we filter it again. So you can test your water also. You can buy kits. Very easy to test what's in the water. A lot of water is what they call hard, has minerals, calcium, that aren't great for the water, but it's also not great for um, cooking. This water that it's tripped, because it is triple filtered, has a little bit of a different property to it. So we're just gonna add the same amount. And you know what? I'm gonna add a piece of apple. Okay, so same thing, we're going to extract. Okay, now you'll notice right off the bat, the color, green-orange. Well, green is a very popular word with food today. Eat the green foods, go green, be green, and that's true. Another superfood. Kale, probably five years ago, became one of the super, super foods. Everybody wants kale. Baby kale in salads, kale cooked. Oh, wow, that looks good. Let me just try it. Wow. And you can taste that garlic, and you can feel the fiber, and it's just a little sweet from that apple. So here are two juices for today. So why would you juice? Well, again, you can go to a store, an establishment, and buy juice. Most bottled juices, canned juices, are gonna be loaded with sugar. There's no sugar, only the natural sugar that's in these products. You can go to a, a juice store where they press and make fresh juices. 
economically might not be the most cost effective thing to do every single day. Or you can stock up from your local grocer, supermarket. If where we live out here, we have a lot of farm stands, so we get great produce and it's pretty affordable. You can stock up, start on, let's say Sunday, do all your shopping and, and segregate seven days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, plan out your juices for the week and make one juice every morning. It's a good way to start your day. And again, the properties of the juices depend on what you put in it, but the health benefits are just overwhelming. Coffee, let's talk about coffee just for one minute. Another large debate. Now we all know some people can't start their day without coffee. I drink coffee. I didn't. I started drinking coffee probably maybe 15 years ago. I didn't like coffee early in my life. I just didn't like the taste. All of a sudden, I had, it became an acquired taste. But what do you do with coffee? Do you buy it? Do you buy the bean? Do you grind it yourself? Do you make a, a, buy pods? Use a machine such as this one behind me. So if you get a cup of coffee and you add a lot of milk and a lot of sugar to it, you're really not getting any, most of the benefits of the coffee. And I like to drink the coffee black and taste the flavor of the coffee. So when you have coffee, I drink decaf with nothing in it. Sometimes I put a little cinnamon on it, again, for the antioxidant properties. Be careful, the recommended coffee allotment for the day these days is two cups, which then goes to well, what's a cup? If you go into a store and you get a, you pull out that cup and you get your coffee to go, most of those cups are 10, 12, 14 ounces. So that one coffee you think you drank, you already did the allotment for the day, if you're gonna stick by that uh, rule or principle. Two cups. Back in the day, and I use that term, there was a limited amount of information available to people. The reason being, you had what we called encyclopedias, which were these books with information in them, um, and you would basically just talk to people. If you wanted to make a phone call, you put a coin in a phone and you went and the thing went around and around and you press some buttons. Today, we all have what? Smartphones. So the information that is available to all of us is vast. It's out here, it's not here. And the problem with that is, there's too much information for everybody to filter in to get what they need. They're like, well, I don't know what to do. Should I do X? Should I do Y? Should I do Z? It's very difficult. So what was developed? Search engines were developed that guide you through the information highway, the super highway we know is the internet. Search engines will narrow your search down. If I go into my smartphone, my iPad, my laptop, whatever it is, and I put in garlic, a lot of things are gonna pop up. A lot of words, a lot of, could be recipes, could be where this was grown, what is it? Everything about garlic will come to my attention right there on the screen. But what do I do with all that information? How do I know what's real, what's not real? You don't, you have to do research. So one of the things I'm gonna to try to do is filter all this information down for you, for your lifestyle. So you say, well, I didn't know that. Oh, I did know that, but that's a different twist on it. Information is the key, is gonna going to be the key to your lifestyle. Knowing what to do, when to do, how to do, why to do. Because there's a lot of things we should shouldn't do and don't do in our life that makes us happy and healthy. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on a power meal. There's a big debate between, do you wanna use wood or this, which is a, uh, it's a type of plastic, but it's, it's a good type of plastic. Um, easy to clean, and you'll notice there's a towel under there, why? because some people don't do that, and when they get onto these type of countertop services, the board goes slide, slides out, and that's how they get injured. Doesn't move, locked in. So just another helpful little tip. Um, one thing I didn't mention before, you'll notice there's two types of glasses, two types of cups, glass and metal. Identical almost in shape, but different in composition. Metal is becoming very popular for a couple of reasons. Number one, it retains the temperature of the beverage. Not glass, doesn't break, so it's got some better uses, but 
The only difference is, and you can see, you can't see the product. So if you're going for the wow effect, because people are gonna eat with their eyes, their nose, before anything touches here. That's how we all eat. We look at something, we go, wow, that looks great. Or, wow, that smells good. And then, wow, that tastes good. But before you get to the third, you gotta do the first two. Should I do the keto, the paleo, the Atkins, the Pritkin, the, the diet? I'm not a big advocate of diets. The reason being, I'd rather have a person eat healthy, nutritious food that satisfies them more than saying, you need to stick to this diet, and then that does what? It puts them in the tunnel. And when people are in the tunnel, they don't like it too much. So what you need to do before we do anything, first of all, you gotta get some medical advice. See a doctor, see a healthcare professional. Get a checkup, get a complete physical. There are centers, hospitals, clinics, plenty of places where you can go and you can have your blood pressure checked, your heart checked, you can have a complete body scan, you can do tons of blood work. All these things need to be done because you need to know how what you're putting in your body is going to affect your body. What, what might be good for me might not be good for you. And if the diet calls for, well, let's add pineapple, but you for some reason are allergic to something in the pineapple, well, that wouldn't be good for you. Another thing you can do, you can look at something called the USDA food pyramid. Now the food pyramid, looks like a triangle, pyramid, gives you, this is what we think you should eat in these categories every day. It gives you two to three from this food group, two to three from that, and it tells you the recommended, the recommended, key word, products, foods that you should eat. Another group that I dealt with had a ladder concept. The ladder concept was to show you the way to eat, and they gave you different tiers to the ladder. The tiers were start with the top tier, go to the second, go to the third, stay away from the fourth and the fifth. Why? because those are the foods that are not gonna be good for you. Those are the foods that are gonna clog your arteries, will give you hypertension. Okay, so we have two pieces of chicken in front of me. Why two pieces? Store-bought, ready to go. Nice grill marks, nice thick piece, looks good, smells good. Raw chicken. Now, there's always, oh, I'm afraid of the raw chicken, it, 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 it's, it's not healthy. What we need to do is to know what and how to do this. I bought this, I cleaned it up a little bit, I took my utility knife, cleaned up the edges. I like to just flatten it just a little bit so it's easy to cut. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna cook this right here and we're gonna compare the two and we're gonna put it into something called a power blend mix and we're gonna add a grain today called quinoa, another superfood. Power blend superfood. Notice the words, power, super. Again, it's like you're gonna put the cape on and fly around the building. Well, that's what, that's the, that's what they're trying to do, that's what they're trying to market, and truthfully, it's, it's the, the properties of these items actually will do that for you. They will give you energy. They will give you um, all the properties that you want Extra virgin olive oil. Good stuff, very healthy. A friend of mine actually imports this, brings it in from Italy, and gives me a, a, just a great supply of it. Um, I use olive oil as one of the fats in grilling, sauteing, or sometimes light frying. This is sea salt. Just a little bit. This is a four pepper blend, four different types of pepper. One of the last things we're gonna do, and if you go into any culinary book or any basic uh, book on cooking, they'll tell you the basic seasonings, what they are. Salt, pepper, lemon juice. 
You want to get the juice out of the lemon, just a little trick. Roll it first. Okay. Okay, so we're about to cook our boneless breast of chicken. We seasoned it with some sea salt and a four pepper blend. We have our olive oil heating up in our nonstick pan. We're gonna take the chicken breast over and then we're gonna add two things, fresh garlic and fresh lemon juice. So first thing we wanna do, cook one side. I just put a little more heat on this. Okay, so we're gonna brown one side, flip it, and you can see it browns pretty quick. I'm gonna put a little bit more heat on it. I'm gonna add that garlic. And you'll notice it's not a tremendous amount. Again, very potent. And now you'll hear the dish starts to rev up a little because it's got the garlic, which has a little water content in it also. We're gonna grab our lemon, another tool that I love, the lemon squeezer, and we're just gonna squeeze a little fresh lemon. Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna close that up just for a second, let it build some heat, let it build some flavor. What'll happen is everything's gotta blend. The concept with heat Heat is what you need to make the flavors blend. It's very important. Okay, now we're gonna go back to a little less. We got a little less than, not even a minute. We're gonna flip it one more time so the garlic and the lemon get onto both sides, and boy, does this smell good. All right, we're almost there. Now, you're gonna notice I'm just put a little bit more heat. This chicken is gonna be a little different when it comes out. It's not gonna look so much like this. Now, what's the first thing you notice? We don't have the grill marks. What are the grill marks? The grill marks are there because this was done on a charbroiler or a grill like you have at your house, your home barbecue, and it really does what? The only thing those marks do, really, eye appeal. People see this and they go, wow, that looks good. You look so uniform, and that's true. The flavor profile can be the same, but remember, you're gonna eat with your eyes, your nose, and then your mouth. Very important. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna let it settle down. And the reason it's jumping so much is because of the lemon juice. Because you have a fat with a liquid. And when you add water, liquid, to any fat, it's gonna jump, okay? A molecular structure. Perfect. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn these a couple of times. Just to absorb some of that lemon juice, garlic, and olive oil. Because this has the grill marks and the look, when we put our salad together, our power blend salad, we're gonna use this as the showpiece on the top. This one, we're gonna cut up and mix in. Love stainless steel bowls also, same reason that I love the cups. Easy to work with, easy to clean. If I drop it, which I tend to do, it doesn't break. Okay, first thing we're gonna add is our power blend. What's in the power blend? Right in there we have kale, kohlrabi, Napa cabbage, carrots, red cabbage. That's it for today. We're gonna take that, we're gonna add some of this grain called quinoa. All different types of quinoa. Here's the good thing about quinoa. Now there are companies pre-cooked, ready to go. All you gotta do is open the bag and in it comes. This is a red quinoa, this is not. This is a different type. It's, it's just based on the color. They're basically the same in properties, but the key is I don't have to cook it. Everybody, it was tough to use quinoa back in the day because you had to cook it and chill it. No, ready to go. I'm just gonna mix that up. I'm gonna set that aside just for a second. All right. And we're just gonna cut these into strips. And then we're gonna cut across. 
What can you add to the power mix? I brought an assortment of things here today. Just, it's really preferential taste. High protein, chickpeas. I'm gonna add a couple of chickpeas today. Tomatoes, these are grape tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah, cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, all different sizes, plum tomatoes, vine tomatoes. These are grape, sweet, flavorful. All tomatoes got something in it that's really good. It's called lycopene, very good for you. So we're gonna add some tomatoes, and it's gonna help with the eye appeal. Because look at that, look at the red. Okay, so this one, we're gonna first plate, and then we're gonna do the dressing. But I brought today, oh, that was so good. This is a, a, a vinaigrette. Now vinaigrettes, I can make 14, 15 different types of vinaigrettes by just altering one ingredient. This happens to be a balsamic vinaigrette. Now here's the key with the dressing. So you have this real healthy salad and it's good for you. Then you go out and you put five ounces of a heavy pre-packaged dressing in it. And guess what? The caloric content goes way up. This is homemade. Same olive oil, good balsamic vinegar, a little salt, little pepper, and you're good to go. We're gonna mix this up. And now comes the fun part, we get the plate. First, I'm gonna plate Primary is nutrition. What you put in is very important. That's what's, what you're gonna get out. But it's also, and we're gonna talk about this at some point, we're gonna talk about protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein, we gotta have. That's what you see here. Those are the building blocks. That's what repairs your muscles, your tissues. Carbohydrates, that's your energy. Fats, depending on what type of fats, I would stick to monosaturated, you know, the good fats, they're also energy and they help you to absorb vitamins. So we're gonna look at all that, but for today, now, we could do just that, say we're done. We could prepare a little garnish, and a garnish again to eat with the eye. We could take the same chicken breast, cut it on a bias, spread it out just a little bit, go back to our lemon, Put a little twist in it, and boom, right? That's what you see on the buffet line in the restaurant. So this is one variation. Same salad, same dressing, store-bought chicken, nice eye appeal. Okay, number two, and now we're just gonna pop that in. We're gonna blend this up, and we're gonna take our scalloped bowl, scalloped shape. And you'll notice it's getting a little messy here, but that's okay, that happens. And now what can we do here? Well, we wanna get some of that eye appeal back. So what we can do is roasted corn salsa today, just to put a little bit on the top. A regular pico de gallo. Actually, I did not make this. One of the guys at the restaurant made this for me last night. And believe it or not, we can put a couple of craisins on top, just to give it that different flavor profile. And then we're gonna finish it off with some more red cabbage and some shredded carrot. So, here's what we have. Same protein blend, okay, chicken. The power blend is identical. Two different ways to do it. So today, we did some power juices and some power plates. The theme today being power. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water and we're gonna talk about this. Again, one of the most soluble liquids on the planet. You need to hydrate every day. If you don't, problems will occur. You don't realize it. When you're thirsty, you're already past the point. You're already in the dehydration stage. So mentally make a note, get a bottle such as this or any type. I prefer metal, doesn't have to be and make a note, did I drink eight ounces, 10 ounces, 20 ounces? How much water did I drink by the hour, by the day? Very, very important. Power juices, power plates. Two different ways to do it. Again, we're gonna eat with our eyes. We're gonna smell, we're gonna go, wow. And that's gonna alert our senses. 
which is part of happy and healthy. Then we're gonna taste. Now, of course, what's in the glass, what's on the plate, has to satiate you, it has to satisfy you. Otherwise, you're gonna be like, I don't wanna do it. And then when you don't wanna do it, guess what happens? That diet that I don't wanna talk about, but that you might be on, is gonna fall by the wayside. If you don't love what you're drinking or eating, it's not gonna work for you. So we have to make these foods appealing. We have to make these foods appetizing. Water, power, power. Um, and of course, we have the mini booty here today to keep us calm. Uh, I think it's time we go down to the gym and do a little workout and utilize all these nutrients. Because these nutrients are what's gonna help us work out today. Let's go. Hey guys, so we landed in the gym, and today we're gonna take one small piece of fitness and try to convey it across to you. So we're gonna do something today called the round robin. It's a unique workout. Um, as I mentioned to you before, I am an ACE certified personal trainer, and I've done this with many of my clients. It's broken down into your upper or your lower body. Today we're gonna to focus on the upper body. One thing we need to remember in the gym, we're gonna do a couple of gym rules and etiquette. First thing, we gotta make sure we're hydrated. Second thing I like to do, I like to keep a little power mix, like our power food, in the gym. Basically today it's just nuts, some dry berries, and a little bit of dark chocolate. A little bit, just to give me a little extra boost of energy. When we go into the workout, we're gonna talk about three primary important points. We're gonna talk about sets, repetitions, and the amount of weight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all three of those and determine that they should never be stagnant. What that means is your body will adapt to your workouts and what will happen is you'll get, you'll get virtually no gains, you'll get no wear. So what we're gonna talk about today intermittently is the sets, the reps, the repetitions, and the amount of weights. Now, in this space, and I'm very fortunate that I have this space at my disposal, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're gonna use primarily dumbbells today. There's also barbells, two different components. These are gonna be the dumbbells that we use. This is a great company that's called Power Blocks. The great thing about this, and what makes these easy, this is from 10 pounds, these are two and a half pounds each. Now it's 15 pounds, all the way up in each stack to 85 pounds. And here's the key, in a limited space. So I can do, when you go to a gym or you go to most uh, places to work out, you see a row of dumbbells. Takes up, it would take up this whole wall. Well, this takes up two by two. So this is very important. Another thing we gotta look at is the mental focus in the gym. We don't wanna do anything in the gym, anything in fitness for that matter, until we are physically and mentally prepared. Again, go to your doctor, get checked out, make sure that you can do what we're about to do here, or that you wanna go out and do a kettlebell workout, or Pilates, or yoga, or the other, any other types of fitness. Very important that you are medically checked out, certified, clean bill of health before you walk into a space. We don't want any accidents and we don't want any problems. So that's very important. Another thing is motivation. When I'm in the gym, I like to listen to music. I have a speaker, I have headphones, I have wireless headphones. I love to listen to music for motivation. Obviously we're not gonna do that today, but it's a method of motivation. I keep certain pictures on the wall to motivate me, of family and friends that I look at, that I think about that I contemplate on, that I meditate on. The key to being in the gym is focus. Never, ever, ever in a gym is there horse playing shenanigans. Why? It's how you get hurt. It's a serious place. Now, serious in the sense that we're not gonna have fun. No, no, we're gonna have fun. But we have to stay focused. So let's start. The round robin is gonna take us through major 
and then minor muscle groups. So the first thing we're gonna go is, we're gonna look at our chest. These are pectoral muscles. You don't need to know the uh, medical or the, or the specific names of muscles. I keep a chart on the wall for my clients if they wanna know the difference between a bicep and the different types or pectoral muscle or a leg muscle, I'll give it to them. Most of them are in Latin, hard to pronounce. You guys just need to know the basics. So we're gonna do what's called a push-pull. We're gonna do the pec, pectoral is the chest, and then we're gonna move to a minor muscle, the triceps. And most of these actions are gonna be what they call contractions or extensions. So let's get started. Okay, so the first exercise we're gonna focus on is for our chest. And what we're gonna do is a basic, basic, basic press. Now, most of the exercises are gonna be extensions or contractions. This is gonna be an extension, and then it's gonna go into a contraction. But this is more of a isolated movement, more than what we call a compound movement. A lot of people say, never do isolated. Doesn't get you anywhere. Not true. We do both. Um, for me, what I'm gonna show you today, it's modified, because we wanna keep moving and get a lot in today. And we're also gonna learn about breathing. The, the primary rule on breathing in the gym is inhale, exhale. When you exhale, you exert the pressure, the weight. You move the weight. So this would be our first set, one set for the chest. Repetitions for today, we're gonna stay in the six to eight range, which is mid range. And then the weight, I'm gonna do a, a very light, moderate weight just to show you the exercise. Now. One thing you have to know about, about lifting weights. Again, it's all about focus. I'm on a standard workout bench. This bench can go either flat, incline, or decline. I'm on a slight incline. The reason I'm on the slight incline, because I want to build a little bit higher on the pectoral muscles. For me, that's what works for me. Years ago, and I do mean many years ago, um, probably 40 almost years ago when I started this, I'm gonna be 63 on my next birthday. It was a lot easier. So I have to be very careful what I do. Because right now what we're doing, our bones and our muscles, our ligaments and our tendons are all interacting to move this weight. So we're gonna make sure we're positioned on the bench. We're gonna make sure we're planted on the ground. Every part of me has to be on this bench and on the ground. You roll off the bench, you're not gonna like it. So we gotta stay in. The first thing I'm gonna do is do a little inhale, and then I'm gonna exhale. One thing you wanna try to do always is control the weight. We don't wanna be out here, out there. We don't wanna be banging the weight. We wanna go super slow and go. And turn your weight. Control your weight, bring your weight down. So, exercise number one, chest press. On an incline, pectoral muscles are involved, so are our tricep muscles. So, in the round robin, that would be our first set. We would log in how many repetitions, and we're gonna stick to the same rep, repetition range in the round robin, and we're gonna track our weight. So what we're gonna get is a form, I use it for my clients, that tells them, how many sets, how many reps, and what was the weight range for that day? Why? We wanna see them increase their weight. Sometimes it may be a decrease. It goes to strength. Don't worry about size. There's two things you gotta know. Muscle weighs a lot. When I started lifting, I actually gained weight, but my clothes still fit the same or better. Muscle is dense. It's gonna weigh a lot, all right? So that was exercise number one. Exercise number two, we're gonna to go to a smaller muscle. We're gonna to go to the tricep. We're gonna do um, an extension move. For that, we're gonna move over to the cage, the power cage, and we're gonna use one of our adapters, and like so. Uh, this is gonna be a tricep extension. This is a power cage, it has a double pulley system, high and low, for this type of an exercise. Now, in the gym, we have the barbell, the dumbbell, and machines. A lot of people are anti-machines, I get it. 
uh, it's a different type of resistance. You don't get the same type of workout. You don't get the same results. Yes and no. What we're gonna do is a combination of everything. So we get the benefit of all the different types of training in a gym such as this. So again, we're gonna make sure that our grip is secure. We don't wanna be slipping off the bar. We're gonna make sure our stance is secure. We're gonna come up almost under the weight. We're gonna get set in the tricep and then we're gonna extend. So we're going for that right side there. You'll see the extension and we're gonna go Okay, again, when the weight goes down, you don't want to slam the weight. You want to be in control of the movement at all times. Chest, triceps. Okay, we're gonna break this down and move on to our next exercise. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our back, back muscles, latissimus dorsi, and we're gonna go down and do what's called a low row with our cable. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a little hit of the power mix. Again, same principles apply. Contact to the ground, firm, control, slow movements, no jerky, herky-jerky movements, breathe. I'm gonna make sure I'm locked up on the bar. I do a thumb overlock. I'm gonna make sure my back is protected so my legs are gonna be bent. If I come into this with straight and start pulling, low back, big problem. I'm gonna stay protected at all times. I'm gonna pull my weight back and adjust myself in a vertical position. I'm gonna take this weight and bring it in low to my gut, to my belly, hence the low row. I'm gonna inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Okay, the low row. Next, we're gonna move on to another smaller muscle group, biceps. Okay, so now we're gonna do a bicep exercise. We're gonna switch over from the machine or the dumbbells to a barbell. If I was going to use the dumbbell, it would be more of what we call an open chain movement because I'm not connected. I'm just doing one or two. With the barbell, it's more of a closed chain movement because I connected my hands, my hands are connected to the bar, to me, so everything in that circle is connected. Again, stance, little bounce, protect the lower back. Head up, breathing, and we're gonna go in, out. In, out. Same thing, slow, controlled movements. Slow, controlled movements. One more time. Okay, now, one little sidebar. So when you're doing all this, what you're basically doing is you're ripping up muscle fiber. And what happens is, to get either bigger or stronger, the muscle fiber has to intertwine and grow. The only way it's gonna do that is with proteins, carbs, and fat, carbohydrates and fat. This is important, but what we did before with the food, just as important. What most people don't realize is training, fitness, all these different activities breaks your body down so it can rebuild and repair. In some cases, especially in the bodybuilding world, it was to get massive and big. Not always the best thing for you, but strength is. As we get older, you lose your balance, you lose some strength, you lose some of your alignment. We're gonna talk about posture, pastoral alignment, being able to stand correctly, not be hunched over, not be low. One of my friends always says we start out small, unable to walk in diapers, and unfortunately that's sometimes how we end up. Well, we don't want that to happen. What we wanna do is what we're doing here today. So that was the bicep curl. One other thing I'm gonna point out, notice the bar. This is called an EZ, E-Z curl bar. What it does, instead of having a straight component to it, it gives me a little bend so it's easier on the arms and the wrists. 
to come up and down. So just another little sidebar. All right, the next thing we're gonna move on to is our shoulders, the top. Okay, so now we're at the shoulder portion of the round robin. With these power blocks, one thing you have to remember is you gotta make sure your magnetic clip is locked in. A standard dumbbell in a gym only has two components, left and right, and a bolt. Make sure they're always tight and make sure that they're not wobbly. When you pick up that dumbbell, and it's gonna look more like one of these, the two weights on either end are locked in. If they're not, and the dumbbell is like a, a wheel about to fall off a car, put the back down, give it to somebody at the gym, get somebody. Safety, very important. Okay, now, this is a tough move. One of the reasons it's a tough move is because we're going above our head. So hard is here, we're going above that. So this is gonna require more strength and breathing capacity. Breath is very important here. So we're gonna do our same setup, gonna grab our weights, sit on our bench, make sure we're planted on the ground. Feet on the terra firma, planted. We're gonna lean back just a little into this, we're gonna lift our weights up, and we're gonna form what's almost like an H. We're gonna do the same breathing, in, out. In, out. In, out, in, out. One other alternative move that I'll just show you quick is to do what's called the V. Turn your weights out, bring them down almost to shoulder height, back up. V, up. V, up. Down, make sure your weights are planted again, get your feet on the ground, and come off. Again, a lot of people overdo. This is not about overdoing. This is about doing things correctly, safely. Great idea to hire a personal trainer if you want to do it all on your own, again, we have that information highway, the internet, plenty of information, plenty of, lots of sites you can go to that'll give you customized workouts. A lot of the fitness magazines, if you go to their websites and you punch in workout, it'll tell you what do you want to do, how do you want to do it, and it, it'll literally show you videos or schematics of people working out and what to do. So that's another good option for you to have. Okay, time for a little more power mix. Hmm, and a little hydration. Okay, so now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the round robin together. Put all the acts of the plate together. We're gonna do chest, triceps, back, biceps, shoulders, all in one move, all in one set. We're gonna start with a different move for the chest. This is a fly. The reason it's a fly is because your arms are gonna go out to the left and right, and you're gonna pretend there's a big wine barrel on your chest, and you wanna grope around it. So, we're gonna come up in the press move, open up, there's that big wine barrel, and we just wanna go around the wine barrel. Breathing is intact. In, out. In, out. In, out. Last one. In. Out. Sit. I'm gonna hold on to one. We're gonna go right to the tricep. We're gonna do something called a kick back. Because we're gonna take this weight and we're gonna extend it. Okay, again, I'm firm, landing on the ground, and I'm gonna kick back. Breathe. You gotta make sure that the elbow in this move doesn't drop. You have to stay in plane with the body. And in the movement, where there's a lot of technical stuff that's employed in the gym. All different types of planes and movements. Today we don't have to get into that, but we will. What you need to know today, again, the basics is safety, safety, safety. That's the basics, all three, same word. All right, now we're gonna go to the back. We're gonna take the same weight. We're gonna hover. We're gonna keep our feet planted, a little bend. And we're gonna do a row. This is a basic row. That elbow should come past my mid-back. And 
and down. Chest, try, back, biceps next. There's two things we can do here. Sometimes I get a little bored and I don't wanna just do a standard bicep move. So instead of doing a standard curl, this is a bicep curl, which is a contraction. I'm gonna contract the bicep, let it down. Could also do a hammer curl, which works a little bit more towards the forearm. Same thing. Or change it back up. Again, you don't wanna be forward, you don't wanna be back. Plant it, straight down, connect to the earth. And that's your bicep curl. Okay, the last thing we're gonna finish up on would be the shoulder. We did our shoulder press, now we're gonna do something called a shrug. Shrug is real simple, you go to meet somebody, you go, you wanna do anything? Yeah, I don't know. How are you? Yeah, I don't know. That's a shrug, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the same stance, same position. We're gonna drop down. I like to take a little tighter on the, on the feet. Weights are down by your side. Little bend, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And done. So, what you would do with the round robin, you would do three sets, in other words, Three chest moves, three tricep moves, three back moves, three bicep, and then three shoulder. So you would have three sets, six to eight reps, depending on the rep range for the day, probably at the same static weight. You may increase a little, and that would be your workout. Now here's the beauty of it. You're gonna work out with your rest intervals, very important, in between. You wanna check. How am I doing? All right, I feel like I'm pumping a little hard because I just worked out or in between. If you ever feel dizzy, faint, stop immediately. You do not work out when your body isn't ready to work out. Rest intervals depends on the person. Some workouts could be a 60 second in between sets. Could be two minutes. Could be high reps, low reps. There's all different components to the, to the recipe for what we do in here. This is just a little bit teeny bit of information to introduce. What we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna grab some power mix, some water. We gotta head upstairs and get some of that food because I am starving. Okay, well that was a good workout guys. The round robin is the way to go. Not the only way to go, but one of the ways to go. What we need to do now is power back up. So let me get a plate and let's get some of this nutritious food. We had our two juices, could also be before the workout, and our two power plates. Exact same ingredients, only styled a little differently. So what I think I'm gonna do is grab a piece of both. So we're gonna take a little of this one and a little of this one. And again, what you're gonna get here is a good blend of your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your fats. All good, all necessary. And let's just dig in. Wow, that's good. That is really good. Make sure after your workout, and during your workout, you hydrate and you get your nutrition levels back up. Very important. You can't repair what you do in the gym without the protein, your amino acids, your carbohydrates, your energy, and your fats. Very important. So I'd love to thank you for joining me today with EATS or for EATS, eating and training smart, all those components. Hope to see you again soon. There's a lot more to come. A lot of exciting things are gonna happen. Join me.